Hey yo, it's OmniDog here with an overview of Silver Age Green Lantern Omnibus Volume 1 from DC. And you can find this book and other books like it at Organic Price Books. Two dollars off with code OmniDog. And big savings, 5% off shipping four more books together with code OmniDog SET. Or this one still works. The really big mouthful. Omni Dog should be together. But Omni Dog Sit works now. So yay. Yay indeed. So Silver Age Green Lantern. I am familiar with these, these uh, stories. These are the uh, comics that I grew up on. Uh, reprints. I mean this thing. Well this thing did start the year of my birth. 1959. So let's take a look at it. The MSRP is 125 on it. And actually, let's take a look at the spinal part, which is the in keeping with what their Silver Age Omnis are doing now. And we can take a quick look at the binding on it. Binding looks solid. Gutter loss, let's see what it's like. Not bad at all, so that's good. No real gutter loss here. Uh, here are the really good things that stand out to me right away, and that is creator credits, page numbers in the, first of all, table of contents, page numbers, and they coincide, hey, with the actual pages here. So that's great. So good uh, table of contents, very thorough. Now here is something interesting to me before we get started. They do have the disclaimer that, um, you know, they, they give uh, an effort as much as they can. They give effort to credit the creators, but I first noticed it in Detective Chimp, where the disclaimer was the comics reprinted in this volume were produced in a time when racism played a larger role in society and popular culture, both consciously and unconsciously. They are presented here without alteration for historical reference. Okay, good. That's, that's good. But <laughs> it's nowhere to be found in this book that I could find. And... It actually has <laughs> racism in it as his uh, Green Lantern's assistant at uh, Ferris Airways or whatever it is, uh, is called Pie Face. He's an Inuit, uh, uh, formerly known as an Eskimo, and Pie Face is a slur for Asian Americans or Asians in general, but in it refers to like a, a broad, flat face with a dull look, which is weird because Pie Face is like he's already figured out <laughs> that Green Lantern is really Hal Jordan, and he's actually super smart and super capable. But they don't have the reference about racism to lead this off, which this is the book that it should be in. So that's an oversight by them. Uh, and... There it is. Uh, Pie Face is a good character, but not the best name. I don't think by any stretch would anybody say. But let's go on to what I liked about Green Lantern. And we'll give you uh, some... The bright colors, some idea of what appealed to me uh, was the bright colors of the... Of the um, the bright colors of the DC covers at the time, I think is probably what attracted me to some of these. And of course, this is the first, um, one of the first science fiction Silver Age superheroes. Um, you know, Flash was more Earth-based. Uh, he showed up in 1954. This, I think, Green Lantern, his first story was in Showcase, 1959. Um, so that's one of the things that always attracted me to DC's uh, 
comics was the bright covers. So this is uh, Hal Jordan in the early days, and he's mostly, um, well, <laughs> this is pretty typical of the way love interests were portrayed back then in the Silver Age. It was, you know, kind of that, if you've seen the TV show Mad Men, you know, sexist, misogynistic. Well, they're not really big misogyny, but they were, they were kind of stilted in their love interests, typically back then. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mean to say misogyny. There's, there's generally none of that in these things, but um, the, the, the portrayal of love in uh, Hal's pursuit of Carol Ferris and their, their love affair is kind of clunky, but the good thing is that these are pretty good science fiction stories. They are, um, he does pretty much defend Earth, def he def defends Earth from kind of outer space type creatures. So he's not really, uh, in these early issues, he's not really the space cop yet, where he, you know, he's been uh, given his ring by a Ben Sir as he's, you know, dying in the, in the, uh, spoiler alert, a Ben Sir uh, dies in the first issue. He generally protects Earth from uh, outer space type threats. And it doesn't happen until a little bit later that he actually turns into the space cop. Like, here we go, some of the later issues. And they... This is where we get into some of the interesting... Uh, this is the first Sinistro... Not the first one, but... Early appearance... Oh, wait, it is the first one. Planet of the Doom Men, Green Lantern. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. The, and one of the things that I liked about these is that these early issues, or any issues, is you always see these Green Lanterns in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors and species and things like that. And I always found those uh, creature designs to be really interesting and Sinistro he's an early offender early and often offender see here we go here are some of these really cool looking aliens alien designs and the necessary impurity of yellow in the ring which doesn't exist anymore I don't think So I really dig these early science fiction stories of Hal and there's Tomari. This is the Green Lantern I grew up with. So this would be my Green Lantern. And I totally get it that other people's are, you know, Guy Gardner, Kyle Rayner, like that. It's, it's who you grew up with, really. Like, your Justice League. My Justice League would be the Silver Justice League. And then Taylor Talks Comics. His Justice League is Justice League International. And here's... There were a lot of good crossovers with Flash. They became buddies. And I believe this is uh, the first one to feature the Flash. There And... Ooh, oh, this doesn't have 45... I think that's the, or does this have 45? Where did I put that dust jacket? No, it doesn't have 45. Um, I think 45 is where we get the introduction to Golden Age Green Lantern. That'll be in volume two. Peril of the Yellow World. Mm. 
Mmm, Star Sapphire. Now that was always a cool storyline to me involving Carol. Whoops, spoiler alert. The Secret Life of Star Sapphire. Uh, but I like that they brought Carol into it. And, of course, Jeff Johns really took it to the next level in his writing of Green Lantern. Look, she is fainting from the excitement. Such a disgrace to our sex. Hmm. Well, I think she's tougher than that. So take it easy, girls. Since you were defeated by a mere man, Carol Ferris, it is clear that you cannot really be the ne next su successor. Uh, so they go looking for a different successor, but we'll see more of Star Sapphire. Here's a retelling of the Aben Sur. They tell, get more in depth into it. I love this cover. Sorry, I'm reading it. Oh, now this is a cool concept. I always like it when you break the fourth wall like that with the artist coming in on that. Gil Kane was famous for those kind of things. And he, Gil Kane's the main artist here with inks by different people. Joe Giela, um, Ann Murphy Anderson. Here's another great crossover with Green Lantern and The Flash. So this is pretty darn good Silver Age art. And the stories were good science fiction, I, I feel like. This is definitely a book that I think people can, if they're interested in the roots of some of the Silver Age DC heroes, this is one of the better books you can get that give you a good feel for how uh, the modern day heroes have evolved. Threat of the Tattooed Man. Strange world named Green Lantern. Um, and so this is one where the first story does not deal with... Here it is. This, this is the backup story. And I always wondered if Alan Moore took some of his ideas for the the planet green lantern from this yeah i f i feel like he did okay i'm going to start reading this if i'm not careful here okay sorry Yep, there's Star Sapphire again. I thought we'd see her again. So this is why I like this era. is very colorful villains and heroes mixed with science fiction. That made me, whereas, uh, you know, Batman was more earthbound in the latter part of the Silver Age when he, well, when he wasn't visiting weird planets and fighting the grasshopper gang and stuff but these were reasonably decent science oh this looks like murphy anderson inks let's see pay up or blow up 885 let's see pay up or blow up that's a good title 885 am i right or wrong 885 I'm wrong. Sid Green. He's uh he inked both of those. That's such a he's such a good inker. Let's 
So this is it. This is the first one, first Silver Age Omnibus. And if you're interested in Green Lantern's history, these are very good stories to start up, to start off with. Oh boy, these inks, I forgot how good Sid Green was. These, oh I, man, these are really good. Power Battery Peril. So yeah, these are uh, a lot of fun, very interesting. A lot of interesting twists and turns and some good art. And at the same time, the Justice League is being introduced a little bit earlier than this. And they reference it. Actually, I think the Justice League came afterwards. Yeah, Justice League came after this, I would guess, early 60s then. So there we go. Boy, we really hit the sweet spot on art in these latter issues. Okay, so there we go. That is Green Lantern Silver Age Omnibus Volume 1 with Volume 2 to follow hopefully soon. I feel like this is a reprint and I just hadn't paid attention because I had the earlier ones. But uh, yeah, this is a really good book that I dig, and I think you'll dig it too if you have an interest at all. Uh, please uh, give me a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so you know when I'm going to be on. Peace and love, peace and love. Visit my Instagram and my Discord. Peace and love, peace and love. Be good to each other out there. Be nice. Try to be nice. Don't cut people off on the road. You know the drill. Just take it easy out there, people. Peace and love. Peace and love. Okay, I'll stop lecturing now. Sorry.